All right, Wednesday, December 22nd. This is, what, like my third week in a row? And who thought I was going to make it past one week in a row without remembering to forgetting to do this? Uh, but I do have to say I won't be here next week because I'll be on the road with my stand-up comedy tour, me and the Reverend Bob Levy, uh, to be the Levy World Order. And it's going to be huge. It'll be December uh, 29th and December 30th and December 31st. The 29th will be in uh, Staten Island at uh, Looney Tunes. The 30th at Tailgaters in uh, Clifton Heights, Pennsylvania. And the 31st, uh, New Year's Eve in Levittown, PA. And it's going to be really good. I think it's going to be awesome. Um, so I also, before I go any further, I want to thank a few people for uh, Christmas gifts. I'm not going to thank everybody because the list is too long, but I want to thank a bunch of people here. Um, let's see. Uh, all right. Uh, Corv at Corvus Malori on Twitter. Tyson Bone. Mike Lodato. Uh, it's just a few people that uh, have bought me some really cool gifts for Christmas. So I want to thank all of them. I also want to thank my doggy for being my doggy. Hey, Gabriel. Come here. Come here, boy. I'm going to put you on TV. Here. Here's my doggy. Sure, there he is. Yay! Yeah. yeah! Look at him. Yeah! I love my doggy. He's the greatest pit bull ever. Look at him. Ooh, yes. Look at him. See? Isn't he adorable? All right, you can go play with mommy now. All right. Um, as you can tell, my desk area needs to be cleaned up. Ooh, I want to point out some things above here, though. I do want to mention that. See, there's a couple... Uh, about uh, six, I guess, six framed raven type uh, pictures, and uh, they were given to me over the years. I don't, um, I'm not one of those people that has a whole room devoted to himself. I think that's kind of absurd. Um, I'm also not one of those people that has saves eight million mark books about themselves with everything that they're in. But if the fans give me something cool about me, then that I got to keep because that just, you know, that just means a lot more to me. And uh, I really think, I look at some of these things here. I mean, these are really amazing. And uh, if you could see him not in sepia tone, which I'm filming in sepia tone, uh, you would see him much better. But the reason it's in sepia tone is because it's really a mess back there. And uh, so it makes it look less messy in sepia, I think. I don't know. I don't care. Um, oh, I was supposed to talk about the uh, the Baltimore story, and or a.k.a. also known as the mud room. Now, I heard Lodi talked about it, but he really didn't do it justice. So I think I will talk about that today. And uh, what it is, is we're in Baltimore, and I think we'd been on the road, me, Saturn, and uh, Lodi, uh, Lodi, Riggs, a eh, bunch of us, the whole uh, flock, all the, uh, the the flock that you hung out with me, the mind, you know, um, I don't think Kidman was with us, though. And, uh, you know, there's always Reese and Hammer, but they always did their own things. Um, but... Uh, so we go to Baltimore. I think we'd been in Philadelphia. We're all, yeah, we were in Philadelphia the night before because we're always in Philly the night before. And uh, in Philadelphia, we were up all night for a couple days. In fact, we may have been up for like three days by the time we got to Baltimore. On uh, we that's when back and I did a lot of drugs, did a lot of ecstasy back then, and we were really, really uh, messed up. So I think, if I'm not mistaken, we get to Baltimore on a Saturday night, and uh, the pay per views on Sunday. So we get to Baltimore on Saturday night, and so, of course, we decide to go out. And so uh, it was uh, the th me, Saturn, uh, Riggs. Lodi hadn't got – that's right. Lodi hadn't flown in yet. This is what makes the story so good. Lodi hadn't flown in yet. Um, Chastity was with us. Uh, my old friend Christine was with us. Um, and uh, I think we had a couple hanger honors too. So we decided to go to this club in uh, Baltimore downtown – and we parked the car somewhere, which we have no idea where the car is, like idiots, because we parked in some garage. And then we go to this club, and we get to this club, and it's nothing happening. And it's like five stories, this club. And we're just X'd out of our gills. And um, we're, there's like five, let's, I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's an after hour. I'm trying to remember the story as I tell it. So there's an after hour, it's an after hours club, and it doesn't get good till two. So, of course, we get there at 10 because we don't know where to go because we're not from Baltimore. But we're so fucked up anyway that we figure we'll just hang out because it can't be that much longer until people show up. And so we wander around this place, and it takes like an hour just to get around the place because it's fucking enormous. And we end up in this room under like the fifth floor or the sixth floor, and it's just this room that's about the size of uh, of a very small bedroom. Not even that big. It's probably 10 foot by 8 foot. It's like the size. It's smaller than a ring. Put it that way. It's smaller than a wrestling ring. And... uh with a low ceiling and then like a tiny little window looking out. 
So we, we decide because we're so fucked up and we can't, uh, and we're just out of our cracker that we're just going to hang out in here. And this room's like the mud room because it's like time has slowed down and everything's turned to mud. So we're hanging out in the mud room and now we're waiting for Lodi to show up. And so we keep calling him, telling him to hurry up. You got to get here. And he's like, no, I'm, it's too late. Cause now it's like one o'clock. He's like, I'm, I just got into town. I'm not, I'm not coming out. We beg him, come on, you got to come. It's the greatest. It's the greatest night ever. So, um, which of course it wasn't. But that's the big rib. So we get we get him to come down. So he comes driving down there. Uh, he drives down there, and then uh, we tell him we're up in the mud room, up on the fifth floor, or wherever the fuck it is. And uh, he gets up there, and and all of us are just because, and of course we've been up for three days at that point. All of us are just like this, and our and our faces are just the the, the muscle in our faces is just is just dripping because there's no muscle elasticity to it anymore. And, uh, and, and, oh, it was, it was so sad and we're so pathetic and we were like, oh, this is great. And we mustered up just enough energy to convince him how great it was and to take some X now because we're going to be up all night. And, uh, so he takes some and then at 10 minutes after he takes it, we're like, ah, we're tired. We're going to bed. <laughs> oh, it was awesome. He was so pissed. And then, so then we, now we got to go find a car, of course. Which we have no idea how to find a car because we parked in some lot, which we don't even know where to. I mean, in some garage, we don't even know where it is. And uh, eventually, uh, I think Saturn uh, paid some guy like ten bucks or twenty bucks to drive the golf cart around, like the parking security guard to drive the golf cart around to find a car. They got the car. They got us to the thing. Got us to the hotel. Um, we end up getting back to the hotel. We got no sleep because we're all too wired to sleep. And uh, we get to the pay per view the next day, completely out of our minds. Um, which is, I recommend, I do not recommend this at home for you youngsters, uh, or any people at all. And, uh, so next day we're so fucked up that Saturn and me went out, we were, I think we were wrestling each other and we went over to match like literally 50 times. And every time we go over it, I would completely forget it. I had no idea what we were going to do. And, uh, so he just was getting frustrated with me. And so, and me and Lodi were just so out of it at that point that we sat on a, um, now they have all those, um, what are they called? Uh, the boxes where all the, the crew equipment is, you know, all the lighting people and all that, the trusses, uh, there, the boxes. We just found a spot, you know, away from everybody else and sat on those. And then we made Kevin Sullivan, the devil, tell us stories all day to entertain us because we were so, uh, we had so little en energy that we, we had turned to mud ourselves and we couldn't even move. We couldn't even function. We were just mud people. And we just sat there and made Sullivan tell us stories all day. And then finally, it was time for my match, and I was just like, and we get to the curtain, I go, Saturn, I do not know a single fucking thing we're doing, that you're going to have to carry me. He's like, he's like, I'm like, tell me what we're doing again. He's like, it's too fucking late. I'm like, I'm like, and I'll, I'll figure it out out there. This is how great wrestling is. This is how great it is when you know what you're doing, you've been doing it a hundred years. The minute I got out there, not only did I not mess up a single spot, you know, we had a hell of a fucking match. Because my, uh, my reptile brain in the back, the hind brain kicked in. It turned, went on, burst through in all cylinders. And, uh, not only did I not know things as I was doing them, but just instinctively I did the right thing at every particular moment. And we had a hell of a fucking match and nobody could tell I was fucked up. And I didn't mess a single thing up. So there. Ah. And then after I had the match and I sweated all the poison out, I felt great and we went back out that night. And Lodi was still pissed because he got stuck in the mud room the night before. And as soon as he got there, he did a bunch of X and then we left. So that's the story. Um, I don't recommend this to people at home because, uh, you know, drugs are bad. Um, they're very bad. And uh, the insides of me are not doing well. Well, they're not doing bad either. But, you know, I'd be a lot healthier if I wouldn't have done all the drugs. I got some great stories, but I also have some uh, the price to pay for it. And uh, if I had it to do over... I would definitely not do anywhere near the amount of stuff I did. And uh, so that's the, one of the reasons I hate glorifying my drug stories is because I don't want other people to be like me to think, oh, you know, I want to be like him. Because that's kind of how I was. I wanted to be like Keith Richards. You know, I wanted to be uh, I wanted to be the guy who could do the most drugs and uh, party the longest and the hardest. And, uh, you know, and look how many wrestlers are dead because that's what they wanted to do or that's what they couldn't stop. You know, or maybe they didn't want to do it, but that's what they... Uh, they couldn't uh, help themselves because of their addiction. I'm very lucky that I only abuse drugs. I was never really an addict. I'm an abuser, as my psychiatrist says. He goes, uh, he goes. I've never seen anybody abuse things like you. He goes, but you're not actually an addict because you can turn and walk away on a dime. Um, 
So I'm very lucky about that. I don't have cravings or anything. In fact, I have negative cravings. It disgusts me thinking about, like, if I thought about doing any X, I would just, like, get nauseous, which is lucky. So on the one hand, I hate telling these kind of stories because I don't want to glorify drugs and, you know, make people think I'm going to be like Raven. But on the other hand, I mean, I know what people want to hear because those are the stories I wanted to hear. So, you know, I kind of try to throw a, tell a story and try to throw a half-assed sermon in afterwards. Um, and uh, so that's that. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the Baltimore mudroom story. Uh, the mudroom is a much, uh, is always the, uh, the highlight of any visit to Baltimore. Uh, I don't think it, I don't think it's on the map though. They should have it on, uh, places to go when you visit Baltimore, the mudroom. Um, thank you for listening. Come to the stand up comedy gig. There'll be no blog next week because I'll be on the stand up comedy tour and hopefully I'll bring, remember to bring my flip cam, take some footage of it and then air that instead, uh, you know, the following week. Or something like that. Uh, okay. Uh, anything else? I don't think so. Uh, Alright, thank you. Uh, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, and I want to point out one other thing. Interestingly, a lot of people say uh, on Twitter, I've noticed, they're going, wow, Raven's not actually this uh, tortured, poetic soul that he is on TV, that the Raven character is supposed to be. Well, if I was that all the time, I would be insane. The fact is, is I'm probably half bipolar because that is me, as well as uh, the person that's telling this ridiculous story is me. And I kind of uh, bounce back and forth. Actually, I kind of, the Raven character I suppress in real life, and I strive to be happy and, and fun in my real life because there's no sense being miserable. But, uh, you know, but that that's so I try to suppress the Ravenish aspects of me. But, uh... Don't think when you watch the character that you're like, oh, man, I really like that character, and now he's not. that's not who he is, and I really feel like I've been betrayed. Because, no, you haven't been betrayed. It's just, look, we all have different personalities inside of us. Raven is me, magnified, as is uh, basically my uh, the Stevie Richards side of me. You know, I got both sides. Uh, two sides are better than one anyway. Much more interesting. Makes me more, makes me not even three, it makes me four-dimensional, which is better than three-dimensional. So... All right, bye bye and bye bonds. Uh, we're damn off button. Damn you, off button. We're damn.